Okay, we have one more big question we got to answer with equations of state. Remember, with equations of state, first we can use them to figure out properties like density. Then we want to use them to do things like solve energy and entropy balances, give us hugs and volume. Uh, and then finally, we want to be able to figure out when a substance is going to change phase. Like that is, what's the boiling point of this stuff? So we haven't been able to do this yet. And uh, to talk about that, we have to talk about two things before we can do the problem. One is the Gibbs phase rule, which we have been using all along, but I uh, haven't articulated. So maybe you remember it from another class. It's F equals C minus P plus 2. And what the heck are those? Well, F is degrees of freedom. That's the number of things you get to choose about the system that we're working on. C is the number of components. So how many things are in this mix? Thus far, we have been working with one component systems. So that's going to be a 1 for us right now, but it'll change in the future. And then P is phases. How many phases do we have in the situation we're talking about? And uh, this only works for no reactions. We pick up uh, other terms if reactions are involved. So when you think about this, um, imagine superheated steam, for example. Uh, well, that's got one component, right, which is water. It's got one phase, which is superheated steam. So 1 minus 1 plus 2 is 2, okay? So it's 2. So the superheated steam tables, you can pick, for example, a temperature and a pressure, and superheated steam exists under those conditions. Uh, so that's pretty cool, right? And you can think of other things uh, where that works. Anything where you have just one phase, uh, you can pick two things about it. And this is what lies behind us say me saying, that every time you know two things, you know everything on the steam table. So it doesn't have to be temperature and pressure, it could be temperature and enthalpy, it could be entropy and volume. All right, now let's talk about saturated. Saturated, uh, we have one component, we now have two phases. Even if it's saturated water, and we say it's 100% liquid, doesn't matter, it counts as two phases because it's saturated. So that's uh, one minus two is um, negative one, plus two is now we're two one. I only have one degree of freedom, and that should sound familiar, because if I say to you, what is the boiling point of water at atmospheric pressure, there is only one answer. There isn't a variety of answers. Uh, but this leads us to a problem, because equations of state are written in terms of z equals a whole bunch of stuff, and usually there's two variables in there, temperature and pressure, for example. And so how do we solve now for the boiling point of something? the point at which the phase changes, if we've only got one degree of freedom, if we only have one number that we know to plug into this equation. Well, I'm going to tell you now. Okay, so we need a way mathematically to say to an equation of state, hello equation of state, I want to know the point at which this substance changes phase at a given pressure, for example, or at a given temperature. So we need a math way to say that, though, because we can't talk to equations of state. They don't talk to us. That's not how it works. So to do this, um, I'm going to define, and your textbook defines. You can go look at this in the textbook. And there's actually more than one way to do this. Um, this is just the one we happen to choose because I like it. Um, we're going to use Gibbs free energy to define this thing called fugacity, which is written with a scripty F. And fugacity has units of pressure. And you can think of it kind of like a pressure, sort of. It's kind of like a pressure. So just, just hold, your, hold that in your head like that. But it's not really a real thing. It is a mathematically convenient thing. And why is it mathematically convenient? Because it is equal, it is a calculatable thing that is equal at, for vapors and liquids when they are at phase equilibrium. And so this means, if we're going to do some math, we can say, oh, hey, equation of state. Um, at this pressure, I want to know uh, the temperature at which this substance boils. And the other constraint I can now put on the system is I'm going to use the equation of state to write an expression for the fugacity of the liquid. And for the fugacity of the vapor, I'm going to set them equal to each other and solve it. And that will give me what I need to know. So let's actually put all this into practice. Let's do a sample problem. So our sample problem that you are going to do today 
is you are going to determine the boiling point of something, the point at which it changes phase from liquid to vapor, because that's the core uh, change we look at in this course. So this is table uh, E, or from Appendix E, from your textbook. Uh, these are a whole bunch of Antoine constants, and it even has the Antoine equation sitting there for you to use. So I want you to start by using the Antoine equation to find the boiling point at atmospheric pressure for whichever one substance you pick. So pick something that's on there that you happen to like. Maybe don't pick water because we've used that a lot already, but pick something else on there. Uh, so that's the first thing you're going to do. The second thing you're going to do is you're going to open up Peng Robinson equation of state and you are going to use that to also find the boiling point at one atmosphere, which because that one's written um, in bars or megapascals, it's, you know, 101325. You want to make sure you use that. And so how do you do this in Peng Robinson? Well, you need to uh, put in your desired pressure, and then you need to modify the temperature. You can do this by hand. You can do this by goal seek, if you're feeling fancy. Um, and you're going to do that, and you are going to step through and see what exactly the temperature is uh, when you make the fugacity equal fugacity. And you might say to yourself, hey, wait a minute, which one's the vapor fugacity, which one's the liquid fugacity? So you've got to be in the three phase region for this to work. So you have to have more than one answer. One answer is always speaking about the liquid. The other answer is always speaking about the vapor. The middle answer is not speaking about anything that we need to care about, so we ignore that one. Uh, and if you want to hint which fugacity and which set of conditions, in fact, which enthalpy and entropy and internal energy are speaking to the vapor, maybe you look at the volume or the density that it calculates for you. And what do you expect that to be for a vapor? And what do you expect that to be for a liquid? And that may give you a hint as to which one of those is the uh, vapor value and which one of those is the liquid value. Uh, but in any case, you're going until those two are identically equal to each other, and then that is the boiling point as calculated by Peng Robinson. And so then I want you to compare those two. Okay? Cool.